So let's get start with the next one. So we have few more theory parts and we'll finish and then we can go for the coding. So mostly, so I'm, I'm telling again, the coding will repeat on these three, these classes only. So if you are strong on these classes, you can write the code on any website. So make sure you are reading every day and yeah, I'm, I'm feeling that you are not reading still from the beginning. So if you read and you can answer any questions, but uh, still people are lagging that, please start reading that, okay? And if you are not reading, again, it's a common. Again, tomorrow, again, you have to join one more batch. I see many people are joining, keep on joining. Because they didn't read these methods, the purpose of this, each method. And if you remember those methods, and uh, it's easy coding. Okay. So the next one is web element return type methods. We have seen web element methods which doesn't return a value, just perform the action on the element. That's it. There are some methods which returns a value to you. So which is going to give a value to us from web page, web page, web page element. Basically, the method will fetch the data for you, fetch the value for you from web page elements. So such kind of methods here. First method is get text method. See the meaning itself, get text from web element. It fetches the text anywhere you want to get the text, just call get text. So it fetches the element text from web page and stores in a string type variable. So a return type method, how to call? What is the syntax? of return type methods. Data type variable name for two. Hmm. Object reference dot okay. return type static methods. No, object reference dot return type. Okay. But here you have to element. So element after you have to call all this method. That's what I told you. So element means I always a driver dot find element. So here the return type is a string. So you write the string data type variable name for equal to assigning. You are assigning a value. So driver dot find element by dot locator locate value dot get text. That means you are getting the text of this element and that output you are storing in the string type variable. That's a get text method purpose. Then get attribute method. So get attribute method is, so you have to give attribute name for that attribute, what value is there for this element? And it will fetch and stores in a string type variable, stores in a string type variable, stores in a string type variable. So a string value equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get attribute of attribute name. So get attribute of attribute name. Okay. So here see attributes are different attributes. We have ID, name, class, value, href, src, alt, tab index. Okay, so any attribute value you want to get for the particular element, then you have to use a get attribute method.
Okay. So uh, let's apply some of the real time scenarios. Now see this. So you want to get tooltip of this one. So what is tooltip? How many of you know tooltip? Can you see in the box when I mouse over on the money element, there is a box on below that. Live commentary of Indian stock market, stock quotes and business news. That is the tooltip. If you want to get that text, the tooltip text, so where this will store, first you should know that the logic, where this tooltip will store in the attribute value it will store. Which attribute? Title attribute will be there. So right click on this element, inspect, and you can see there is a A tag. A tag means this is a link. Then you have href attribute. Then href attribute after you have a title attribute. So in the title attribute, the tooltip will store. This is the one you need to remember. This simple logic you should know. Where the tooltip will store in the title attribute. Then how can you get the attribute value using get attribute method? So what is the get attribute method syntax? String val equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get attribute of the attribute name you have to give title. So that's a code I have given complete code to you guys. Then second scenario, how can you fetch the URL of the link? First, you should know where the link URL stores in the HTML, in the href attribute, where it will store href attribute. That concept you should know first. If you know that concept, you can build the code. Not only here, I'm telling you even other places also. So then how can you fetch the URL? Then again, href attribute value is the URL of the link. Then how to get the href attribute value using get attribute method. What is the get attribute method syntax? String URL value equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get attribute of within double quotes href. So how can you fetch the image source? So the image source will be found in SRC attribute. So this logic, you, we should know that. So these are all the concepts are very, very important. So if you know the concepts, anywhere you can go and write the code. Next, say string image source equal to driver dot find element by dot locator of locator value dot get attribute of src. See, get attribute method I am passing src is an attribute. See here href is an attribute, title is an attribute, but this is the generic formula. It doesn't matter what attribute you want. If you remember this syntax and you can, you don't need to remember, remember but you should know these concepts where the link URL will be there, where the tooltip is available, which attribute tooltip will store, which attribute uh, link URL will store, which attribute image source will store. These concepts you should know. If you know that, then this formula will help you. Okay, next, get the CSS value of CSS property. You want to fetch CSS property value, then you can use a get CSS value method. So what are the CSS properties? Let me show you. Directly I will show you here. See, can you see any element you highlight, you will get a, so these are the display under styles. Under styles, 
you will get a display, margin, position, text type and decoration, color, text align, font family, font size, background image, background color. So these are all called CSS properties. Okay, so any of these CSS property values, what are the CSS property values? See text type and decoration value, none no, for this link. Color, this is the color. And uh, text align center. Font family, so this one, Arial. Font size, 13 pixels. So any of these CSS properties, value you want. What is the method we need to use? Get CSS value method. And for this method, you pass an argument as a CSS property name. Name you give. Basically, all the elements name, CSS property names are common. Only values will change. Even attributes are common. Attribute values will change from element to element. This concept you should know. Okay, so then here is the all the CSS properties and you can give for that method. See, code snippets for above scenario, how can you fetch the particular element color? So string variable equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get the CSS value of color. So how can you find the particular element is underlined or not? So string ud equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get CSS value of text type and decoration. So get location. It fetches the element position in the web piece. So you want to fetch the element which, so what is the x and y coordinates of an element? So then you can use a get location point p equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get location method. So system dot out dot printer the SOP is nothing but system dot out dot println x coordinate is this point object dot get x method y coordinate point object dot get y method get size method. It fetches the height and width of the element. So it returns a dimension object. Get location returns a point object, point class object. So get size method will return the dimension class object. Dimension D equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get size method. System dot out dot print ln. So D dot get height, D dot get width. So object, so it is the two methods in Selenium 3, but in Selenium 4, they changed this to different format. But you can use these two also, but still Selenium 4, we can use this. The element dot, get rect dot, get dimension method dot, get height. Then if you want width, get dimension dot, get width. So this is the lengthy one you can use. Or you want to get a x coordinate element dot get rect dot get x method. So y location logo dot get rect dot get y method. So this is the get x and get y method you can use. So this is the how you can identify the particular element height, width x coordinate and y coordinates. So the next one, you want to fetch the element tag name. Then you can use a get tag name method. It fetches the tag name for the element. So string t is equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator value dot get tag name method. So this element tag it will fetch and stores here. That's all the return type methods. See, it, Return type means each method will return a value to you. That's a meaning. 
Okay, so the next one is uh, Boolean methods. What are the Boolean methods? So these are also written type methods. Boolean methods is nothing but they will return a Boolean value, true or false. So you will come to know is displayed, is displayed, is enabled, is selected. These are the three methods available. Is displayed method. So it, it just checks whether the element is present in the web page or not. If element is not there, returns false. If element is present, it returns true. So first identify the web element. Web element element name equal to drive dot find element by dot locator and locate value. If element is displayed, then do the actions on that element. Else, do the other actions. Next, is enabled. It checks whether the given element is enabled or disabled. So, web element, element one equal to driver dot find element by dot locator locator. First, identify the element. Then, if the element is enabled, if it is disabled, we cannot do any action. So, if it is enabled only, you can perform the click action or type action. Okay, so that's the is enabled method. Next, we have is selected method. Is selected method. So whether your checkbox is checked or not, or radio button is checked or not, your drop down is selected or not. If you want to know, then you can call is selected method on those elements. See, is selected is for these three elements. Do, to know the status of that element, you will call this Boolean methods. So first verification purpose, you will call these methods on the element. Then you can perform the actions. Without knowing the status, you cannot do. If the element is not there, you cannot perform the action, right? That's why you call is displayed method on that element. If it is present, then do the action. If it is not present, don't do the action. So that's a if else conditions you use. If it is enabled, okay, you click it or you type it. If it is not enabled, you cannot do any action. So that uh, checkpoint is a mandatory purpose. You are going to you call all these Boolean commands. Is displayed, is enabled, is selected. If checkbox is checked, but your purpose is you want to check whether the checkbox is checked or not. Then how can you, if you click one more time, it will uncheck you. But your requirement is not fulfilled, right? That's why you call E selected. If the element is selected, don't do any action. If it is not selected only, you check it. That condition we need to write. If you want to write, you need this Boolean commands. Okay? So that's all about return type methods, web element return type methods. So tomorrow, I'll cover a few more points. Last, uh, no, tomorrow we can finish the theory yeah. part, then we can write the coding, okay? So any questions?